Good morning. Here we are facing that time of the year yet again. Christmas season as the world refers to it, or more accurately, silly season. In the church, this time of the year is called Advent. The word Advent is used to report the arrival of an important person. And the church has adopted this word to describe the time for preparing us for the celebration of the birth of the most important and most notable person of all time, our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the devotions prepared by the team for this time will speak to your heart and bring new and refreshing meaning to what it is that God accomplished by sending his son to live as man on earth, to die alone bearing the sin of the world on his shoulders, to rise from the dead, thus defeating death, and thereby offering salvation to eternal life in his presence to all those who choose to believe in him and surrender their lives to his lordship. I'm going to read Psalm 72 this morning. It is a blessing prayer prophecy from David himself describing the Messiah to come. Let us read together. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. May the mountains bring prosperity to the people, the hills the fruit of righteousness. May he defend the afflicted among the people and save the children of the needy. May he crush the oppressor. May he endure as long as the sun, as long as the moon, through all generations. May he be like rain falling on a mown field, like showers watering the earth. In his days may the righteous flourish and prosperity abound, till the moon is no more. May he rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. May the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores bring tribute to him. May the kings of Sheba and Seba present him with gifts. May all kings bow down to him and all nations serve him. For he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. He will take pity on the weak and the needy and save the needy from death. He will rescue them from oppression and violence, for precious is their blood in his sight. Long may he live. May gold from Sheba be given to him. May people ever pray for him and bless him all day long. May grain abound throughout the land and the tops of the hills may it sway. May the crops flourish like Lebanon and thrive like the grass of the field. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. Then all nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and Amen. This concludes the prayers of, Dav of David, son of Jesse. Wow, there is so much promise contained in this blessing prayer. So many awe-inspiring images, but I'm going to attempt to unpack only a few this morning. Graham has been dealing with the majesty of Jesus, his kingship, a child born to carry the government upon his shoulders, and we have heard from Laura how important it is to wait upon the Lord for his timing is perfect. He rules his kingdom according to his will and within his timetable. I opened this morning by saying that Jesus Christ offers salvation to eternal life to all those who choose to believe in him and surrender their lives to his lordship. I immediately heard in my mind the question so often asked and that so often stands in the way of some surrendering to his lordship. What about those who never hear the truth or have never been reached with the word of God? I believe the opening verses of the psalm answer that question. Endow the king with your justice, O God, the royal son with your righteousness. May he judge your people in righteousness, your afflicted ones with justice. The King James Version Dictionary defines the word righteousness as purity of heart and rectitude of life, conformity of heart and life to the divine law, nearly equivalent to holiness, comprehending holy principles and affections of heart, and conformity of life to the divine law. 
It includes justice, honesty and virtue with holy affections. A righteous and just God will not judge a fish by how well it can climb trees. He will not judge those who have not heard the word of God by what they have not heard, but rather by what they have experienced of him in whatever way and how they responded to that experience. This is how Abraham and Noah were called. There was no written word of God. They responded to the experience of God in their personal circumstances. However, once you have heard the word of God and the truth of the work of the cross, you will be held accountable as to what you did with that news, how you personally responded to it. But I digress. This psalm tells us that Jesus will bring prosperity. He will defend the afflicted. He will save the needy. He will crush the oppressor. I do not read this as meaning all those who follow Jesus will be healthy and wealthy and free in every literal sense. Rather, once we have surrendered to his love for us, nothing within our circumstances will be able to restrict the prosperity of freedom we experience in the knowledge that he holds our lives in his hands. There will be affliction, there will be need, there will be oppression, but once we are in relationship with Jesus Christ, None of these things will break us. We will always experience his love and protection like rain on mown grass, like showers watering the earth. There were a good number of video clips that appeared on social media last year, showing rivers coming to life after years of drought here in South Africa, showing how the dry, dusty paths were converted to gushing streams of running water. This is what our security in God's love does for us. His love washes over our dry desert hearts and brings refreshing that overflows in joy. Even though the grass on our river banks may still be dry and even non-existent, His love gushes and brings new life and soon the grasses will again begin to grow. This is what Jesus said of Himself in Luke 4 verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because He has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free. There are many who can and do share their own stories of receiving freedom, healing and salvation from within their circumstances when they have encountered Jesus. Now we come to an interesting image contained in Psalm, in this psalm and in two other scriptures that I have been able to find. May the desert tribes bow before him and his enemies lick the dust. Isaiah 49 verse 23 says, Kings will be your foster fathers and their queens your nursing mothers. They will bow down before you with their faces to the ground. They will lick the dust at your feet. And Micah 7 verse 17 says, They shall lick the dust like a serpent. They shall move out of their holes like worms of the earth. They shall be afraid of the Lord our God and shall fear because of thee. The Bible dictionary explains the act of lick, licking the dust as falling flat on your face or utter humiliation. I understand it also to mean complete surrender. When one is prostrate, face down, flat on your stomach and arms spread akimbo, there is no form of defense left. You make yourself utterly and completely vulnerable. You are unable to see what is coming and unable to prevent it from affecting you. That is what our relationship with Jesus should be. One of prostrated, face-down surrender to his will and to his way. Ish. We were all once enemies of God and this is what happens to our spirit when we encounter his son. What a challenge. In many cultures today, it is still the norm to prostrate oneself in the presence of the chief or the king. I remember how taken aback I was the first time I encountered this act of humility when I went to meet the chief of the village of Manenje in Vembe. Upon his entry into the room, all the ladies in my company fell to the floor at his feet and only rose when given permission to do so. There I stood in all my Western cultural glory, standing like an awkward sore thumb in the presence of this man. We have forgotten what humility is. We have become so self-absorbed with our rights and with our own ambitions and desires, 
with our own need for freedom of choice, etc., etc., that it has become a foreign idea to completely surrender our lives and our wills to that of God Almighty. It is a challenge to know how to do it, simply because our culture has taught us not to do so. We give our lives as a tribute to him, just as the kings of Tarshish and of distant shores brought tribute to him and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. We should bow down to him and serve him, for he delivers us when we cry out in need of help. He takes pity on our weakness and saves us from death. He does not prevent oppression and violence, but he rescues us from it, for precious is our blood in his sight. We should pray and bless him all day long. When we learn to surrender completely to him, to lick the dust at his feet, then will the grain abound throughout the land. On the tops of the hills it will sway. The crops will flourish like Lebanon and thrive like grass of the field. All nations will be blessed through him and they will call him blessed. We will experience such abundance in our souls and in our spirits that no circumstances will be a challenge. No virus, no travel bans, no sickness, no sadness will be able to hold back our joy and prosperity of spirit as we soak in the showers of his love and allow the rivers of his life to flow through our dusty pathways. Praise be to the Lord God, the God of Israel, who alone does marvellous deeds. Praise be to his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. May his name endure forever. May it continue as long as the sun. May this time of Advent remind us always and every day why it is that we come together as families, why it is that we sit around tables, why it is that we gather in fellowship with each other. Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God our Father, was given that all who believe in him may receive eternal life. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, All Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Lord Jesus Christ, teach us again what it means to be humble. Teach us what it means to live for you in a state of absolute surrender. Teach us, Lord, how to lick the dust at your feet. Let your Holy Spirit flood over the dry riverbeds of our souls and teach us to rejoice in you regardless of our circumstances. May our joy and our peace be a testimony to those who waver and may it draw them into a closer and more meaningful relationship with you. Amen.